Oh, can I can I open my eyes now? Yes. It's just what I wanted. Oh my god, I'm so glad you Ah, you arrived. Are you how was your trip? Are you feeling was it Did anybody bother you? Did you take the bus? I've got to get out here. Ryer's waiting. I was. I've been here for about 12 hours. Haven't eaten. No, it's not true. Uh, hey, I'm so glad you came back. Or is it your first time, right? We keep, we go over this. You know, this is the third week. Actually, technically, I missed, I did miss last week. I'm sorry. I've got, uh, that, you know, gotta, gotta be into, you know, sometimes you get scared of yourself, right? Ah, awkward, I'm right here. What are you scared of? I can hear you, right? You're scared of yourself. I'm yourself. And you gotta, you gotta take a little break, right? Take a little, uh, that's hard, right? The consistency, but that's very, everybody says that with podcast. Oh, you gotta be consistent. You got to put it out at the same, uh, same day, same time, same minute, same second. Oops, you missed a second. Algorithm doesn't, algorithm's upset. What? It's, yep, they only like when you're painted blue and you live in a pink house. What does that even mean? It's not me, it's the algorithm. What? Yeah, I get. And no, people say you got to be consistent with podcasting, and I want to be. I'm I'm pretty consistently inconsistent. That's an issue I have. Uh, you know, I don't know how people kind of live life uh, every day. You know how people can just keep doing it. You know how people participate in uh, the public consistently, right? I've got to do. You know, uh, like three days on, three days off, one day to the side. That's when I still go out in public. I just don't, uh, don't do anything. I just kind of look at people weird. Just kind of freak everybody out. That's what I, uh, yeah, people, people say that, you know, you've got to, You've got to participate. It's that's hard, you know. Sometimes you got to take a fun little break, right? I uh, I love a good break, you know. Go into a, a coffee shop, and uh, buying a shirt. I bought this shirt today from a dinosaur. One of my favorite genuine Joe's coffee shop. It's one of my favorite coffee shops. I love it. It's a dinosaur themed coffee shop, and uh, and they keep almost going out of business. It's happened like four times where it's like kind of a big thing and then it's and then it's like, yeah, we made it. And then it's like, oh, but I don't know. I don't think it's definitely not a not a scheme, but it is unfortunate. Like, I think that happens with a lot of uh, coffee shops, you know, because coffee isn't that expensive. And then people just kind of hang out for long periods of time. Oh, I'll get. Yeah, I'm gonna get a you know a one dollar and thirty five cent uh, iced tea. It's probably more than that, but and then I'm gonna stay till till Wednesday. I'm just gonna kind of hang out here till the for a fortnight. You know that's uh, that's an issue with a lot of the twenty four hour coffee shops. Have you guys do you? Do you have those in where you live? Do you have a 24-hour coffee shop? That's an issue. It's an issue, but it's a wonderful thing. I didn't I didn't know about those until I got to Austin because it's really kind of an unusual concept, 24-hour coffee shops. Because the idea of, you know, is, oh, like at any point of the day, I want to be able to begin Okay. Oh, you know, it's, uh, I've been awake for 12 hours. Let's start now. 
Oh, it's 3 a.m. Preheat the oven. I'm going to be awake for a while. You know, it's 12.15. Rev the engine. <laughs> We're just starting the process. Yeah, I love a good 24-hour coffee shop. The one I used to go to, uh, it's called Epoch, and it's really, it's really cool. But it, the, recently they made it uh, close at midnight, and I think that's because nobody was buying anything. And uh, but it was always packed. So there's just a lot of homeless people. It's kind of insane. It was just this, uh, I mean, terrifying number of. It's just everybody's homeless and everybody's on a laptop and I don't know what's happening. They're definitely not looking for work. So that's, that's what that is. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I love the idea of kind of just being somewhere uh, for a while and doing something that's not really time appropriate. You know, like, I I like to wait till Christmas is over and then buy like the Christmas decorations, right? I'm a you know I'm a a cow uh, grazing at night, waiting for all the other cows. I had to go to sleep and then I get up and I just eat around their cow bodies. Like now I don't eat the cow, but I eat the grass around their bodies. Uh, and then when they wake up, there's just like a fun little shape of a cow. Is that okay? Yeah, I love nighttime. I love nighttime, but you can't only be awake at night. That get you know, then you kind of go crazy. You get like hamster instincts, you know. You're just kind of constantly running on this terrifying wheel. You know, only willing to go outside when you're in a ball. Protect me. You've got to go, uh, you've got to be awake during the day. Got to participate, right? That's what we were talking about, that consistency. You got to got to put out uh, a podcast every Thursday, Ryer. Every Thursday. Oh, my God, I didn't introduce the podcast. Fudge. Hey, everybody, welcome to the Hole in the Pen Cap. This is episode three. Uh, I'm your host, Ryer Cameraman. Uh, some call me Ryer Cameraman. Other people also call me that because that is my name, right? Uh, kind of makes it fun. My first name's actually Grace, which is fun. I don't know if I look like that, but um, yeah, not really. But it's kind of fun to have. Uh, Another name a little bit, you know, sometimes I'll use it at like coffee, back to the coffee shop, right? God, God, I, do I, do I live there? Unfortunately, yes. Uh, I live in the bathroom behind the chalkboard. They've got chalkboards in the bathrooms now, uh, which is kind of scary because it's become this forum for like fiery political debates. It's really strange. One time, I mean, somebody just wrote abortion, question mark, and then under it, uh, there was a Venn diagram where people were just adding pros and cons of abortion. In the middle, somebody wrote murder. Fun! That's good. That's what I want to see before I eat my carrot cake. The barista at uh, one of my favorite coffee shops is transgender, and that's fine. We're okay with that. We're all right with that. <sighs> Behind the times. Um... Yeah, you know, uh, we're okay with that. But she wears a witch's hat, and that's not okay. Freaks me out to be a little bit. Because we're, you know, to wear the hat of, of a uh, 
a a mythical kind of I don't know I mean they're not mythical because they they I guess they were real in history, but aspects of what we talk about are are mythical, right? Like they, you can't fly on a broom. Believe me, I've tried. God, I've given that a go, right? Uh, you can't fly on a Swiffer sweeper either. You think maybe that would give you a better chance because it's. You know, water can, you know, water's kind of the fuel of life, so maybe there's something in that that can make you fly. It's tricky. It's all, it's all tricky. Yeah, she wears a witch's hat, and uh, I, you know, I used to go get carrot cake every day uh, because I, and, you know, I don't like carrot cake, if I'm being candid. If I can, did uh, be true. That's if I'm being honest. I I don't like carrot cake, uh, but you got to keep the lights on, right? Correct. Is that true? You've got to keep the lights on, you know, because nobody, like I said, nobody's buying anything. Everybody's homeless, and they're giving them coffee because that's good. Let's give the homeless people coffee. They're not uh, energized enough, right? I mean, yeah, it's strange. You definitely, but then it's also at that coffee shop, it's, it was always like one girl working there uh, and nobody else would be on staff. So there's nobody, there's nobody that's really able to be like, hey, I'm sorry, guys, if you're not buying anything, you've got to go. So it just became this, there's like couches. And it, so there would just be homeless people sleeping on all the couches and locking themselves in the bathroom. One time I asked the barista, I was like, hey, how, how are you doing today? She's like, well, nobody's locked themselves in the bathroom, so I guess I'm okay. <sighs> oh my God, does that happen a lot? Every day. Okay, well, that's sad. That's unfortunate. Yeah, I guess that's an issue. Um, but it makes sense. Yeah, if you want to sleep for a little bit, just kind of lock people out of your sleeping box, and uh, maybe you'll be good, right? Maybe you'll be okay for a little bit. Um, well, one time I saw somebody have a seizure at the 24-hour coffee shop, and I had uh, Narcan, with me in in my bag like it like I but I didn't know where in my bag so I uh I dumped out my bag and by the time I found the Narcan the guy was pretty much awake but I didn't know if he was for sure awake and I really did, wasn't for sure how Narcan worked so I gave Narcan to a conscious man which I don't think you're supposed to do I don't think it can hurt. It can't hurt you. I just didn't know. But it was crazy that I was like sifting through vitamin waters and and he was like kind of coming to and was, I found it. It was definitely, I don't think it was something that would have needed Narcan anyways. Uh, but we all want to be a hero, right? Everybody wants to Save a homeless man, right? I think so. I don't know. It was very strange, though, because the uh, ambulance came because we had called 911. It was me, this uh, very religious woman, and then there was a, like, black Muslim man that, and this is not a, a stereotype or anything. This is just what was that? He was on, he, he was just not really interested. I think he was really busy. It seemed like he was working on something. So it was mostly me and the uh, religious woman kind of dealing with this. And the barista with the witch's hat. Me, the religious woman, the barista with the witch's hat, and the black Muslim man. Kind of just a, kind of just a group of heroes. And we called 911, and the ambulance came. And I guess there's rules that you can't... So he had hit, the homeless man had a seizure. He fell off. He hit his head on the ground really hard. And it it was pretty clear that he was having, like it seemed like brain bleeding. 
Like he had his face, like a large portion of his face was like purple and red. We're like, oh, he needs to go to the hospital immediately. Like he's going to die. This is horrible. And then they come in and the he had come to, but he was like not really there. He was he became like really um what's the word when you don't want somebody to like really I guess defensive, combative, combative, combat, combo to became really combative and he didn't want them to take him because he was homeless and he uh I guess was used to the police and you know any authority being negative. And so he was just waking up and he's like, I didn't do nothing wrong. I didn't do nothing. I promise I didn't do nothing wrong. Get out of here. Like, it was like, really? And then they were like, well, no, we just want to check. We're, you didn't do anything wrong at all. We just want to check on you. We heard you had a seizure. It's like, I didn't do nothing. He kept saying that. But you did do, I mean, not intentionally, but something happened. And we we want to check on you. And so it was me and the religious woman trying to kind of uh, tell the ambulance what happened. Yeah, he fell off and he had a seizure for like two and a half minutes and he was convulsing. And then this the homeless man was like, that never happened. It's like, no, you you were having a seizure. You wouldn't have known. Of course, you. it would be weird if you're like, yeah, you know, I remember that. I mean, you you were unconscious. But it was crazy. He was like foaming at the mouth and we were getting him on his side so that he didn't choke. And then he's like, that never happened. And the ambulance was like, no, we no, we know this happened. Because all these people are saying this happened. And yeah, and you have, your face is purple. And then, uh, you know, he was like, I'm not going nowhere with you. And then, I guess there's this law that you can't take somebody uh, that doesn't want to, like an adult, that doesn't want to go to the hospital unless you deem that they're uh, unable to make the decision, which clearly was the situation with this man. He was unable to make the decision not to go to the hospital. But uh, what they did, so they asked these questions. So, So what's your name? And he didn't know. Okay. Don't know your name. Uh, where are you? No clue. What state are you in? No idea. Uh, pretty much any, all the basic questions. And then they got to, so how many dimes are in a dollar? Ten. Oh, well, you're good to go. They let him go. They, well, they, he didn't even go anywhere. He stayed at the coffee shop. So there was a man not drinking coffee. I don't think he had coffee at this point. He was just on a computer. Because they all have computers, but like no food or clothes. I don't know what's going on with the computers. But uh, so he was just sitting at a computer with a purple face. He was purple and like bold, you know, like clearly extremely disoriented. Well, I'm just sitting over there eating carrot cake. Because what do you, we already called 911. You came, hey guys, I think you need to come back. <laughs> this isn't, you know, I left after a little bit because it got weird. And then I was just talking to the religious woman because she seemed in, a, in the mood to talk. And I, <laughs> you know, I'll converse. I'll, wow, you know, I, I prayed. She said this at one point to the ambulance guy, the the paramedics, ambulance guys. They prefer that. And she said, uh, you know what? I just I just prayed to God, and he told me that he's not having any brain bleeding, and so everything's going to be okay. Guys, I don't think that's good. I just remember looking at the ambulance and they were like nodding at she um no hey no let's not do that let's not make major medical choices for you know and I, I religion is a beautiful thing it can be a very beautiful thing uh but we also have to use logic in that sense as well right because that's how people die 
when you're like, oh, yeah, you know, I prayed to God. And he said that uh, the plague isn't that bad. So everybody go, everybody go to the store. What? No, it's a horrible idea. Oops, that's what God wanted. Guess he wanted that. This is crazy. So yeah, that was kind of a, a strange situation that happened at that coffee shop. But I still go back, you know, I don't, I'm getting less scared of the homeless people. I think that's, uh, in a dead that's scared. I think it's cautious. You got to be cautious. I mean, Austin uh, has so many homeless people, and I think it's kind of because we're Austin is like it's the kind of like the best thing surrounded by the worst thing, which is you know the best thing being like this comedy mecca kind of that. I don't know if that's that I I it, it's a great place to do comedy. And there's all these people that are so passionate about it. And it's become this amazing thing. But then around it is, it, it was built pretty much in a homeless encampment. I mean, they're like um, the shelters and everything. It's on the same street pretty much. So all of these homeless people live on 6th Street. And so you're like walking. You're like, oh, I'm going to go see like, uh, you know, Jessica Kears. Or I'm going to go see... Yes, uh, Tom Segura, and then, you know, you're like walking by somebody dying. I don't want to go anymore. It's like really, it's crazy. The things that you see, I mean, and everybody, of course, is asking for money, and everybody's on crack, maybe. I don't know, not just crack, everybody's on everything. But some of them, it's like very clear, like the way they're looking at you. And they're holding up like one time I saw a guy, you know, those how there's like like on a table at a restaurant, there'll be like that umbrella that kind of canopies above the table. I saw a guy that had just pulled that out like he pulled that out of a table. So it was the pole and the umbrella part. And he was just like walking down the street with it. How did you even get that? That's impressive that you were able to pull that out. I think it's connected to the table. I mean, the stuff that you see homeless people carrying is crazy. You know, I have lots of shopping carts, of course. You see strollers. That'll be, one time I was, uh, I was walking down 6th Street and there was a homeless man that was like jogging with a stroller. And I almost, at first I thought it was like, you know, like a, like a dad pushing a baby. And then I looked again and I was like, oh my God, no, he's like bleeding. And there's just clothes. So he was just kind of running from, you know, not for fun. It wasn't like a recreational jog. Just kind of running through the streets. That's always, it's always weird when you see people that are not homeless jogging on 6th Street. Because, you know, Especially if they don't have like a shirt on. It's like there's very little keeping you from being homeless right now. Like you see someone running, your immediate instinct is, oh, what's what's behind them? Oh my gosh, this is terrifying. It's a beautiful place. It is. A Austin is wonderful. Uh, you know, it's it's much it's much more affordable than a lot of the big city, a lot of the big comedy cities. So that's great. That's nice. It depends what you're willing to live in, though. I mean, I've always said, that, like, uh, what you're willing to pay for, you know, for your rent is kind of what you're agreeing to put up with. Like, if you're, if you're paying $600 a month, I mean, there's going to be quite a bit that you're potentially taking on. Crazy roommates, uh, people leaving heroin needles in the bathroom. That's happened. Hey, you forgot something. Did you need this? Being scared to go to the kitchen because people are fighting violently. Kind of eating cereal uh, while petrified. That's happened. 
you know, just really bad roommate situations. And so that's why I feel so lucky now, the situation I'm in. I have two amazing roommates I love. Um, you know, strange things happen, uh, but we're in a good situation, I think. You know, it's nice to because I get I get scared a lot and they let me sleep on the couch sometimes, which is well most it's been happening a lot. But they're nice and I and I leave whenever they say I have and the and their dog is being, you know, is nice and gets off the couch for me most of the time, which is good. Cause sometimes I do have to just kind of lay, you know, like just get in a fetal position, just like <gasps> just with a golden doodle kind of sitting alert, watching out the window and barking anytime somebody kind of comes by. Nelly, I'm terrified. (laughs) I pet you. (sighs) She's a wonderful dog. They're both wonderful dogs. We have, uh, you know, my, my roommates both have dogs. Hmm. Well, I'm glad we had this talk. Now there's much more. I'm having a good. Uh, I'm having a good week. I pretty pretty good. I've been working a lot. Uh, I work as a door guy at a comedy club, and I I love it. It's fun. Um, but I also like I've talked about. It, I'm not great. I mean, the other day I, uh, they had me wanting people again which I have told everybody I'm not good at. But sometimes you have to because there's not enough people, so you have to do it. Uh, and I just get, I mean, I'm I'm bad at remembering to, like, drink water, too. So at one point I just got, like, really dehydrated, and then I was cleaning a fan for some reason. I decided I needed, I was also asked to, but I, I think I was the one doing it uh, to the extent I was doing it. We have this big fan because um, people noticed that I was getting kind of delirious. Can you put your arms out? I don't want you down. Put your phone in this bag. You're never getting it back. So they gave, so they put out a fan, but the fan had all this dust on it. So I was like spraying, uh, like cleaner into it. And it was kind of uh, like coming back out at me a little bit, like, cause I thought it might be better if the fan was on because I was cleaning it while I was off and it wasn't coming off. So I turned the fan on and then I was just having chemical spray in my face and I was, and it got much worse. So this is nobody's fault but my own. I went, um, before this, I went to CVS. Civis. Went to CVS. And I, uh, I well, this morning, I because I went, I ran out of Wellbutrin yesterday. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, it was bad. I ran out of Wellbutrin, and I had, you know, called my pharmacist, no, my, called my psychiatrist, or I had uh, gone through the portal How would you get in the portal? I had gone through the portal, which is a crazy thing to call that, um, and said, hey, running out of the butrin. It's not going to be good. Mommy's going to get sad. Start, um, start kind of uh, crying in odd places. So I it was like, hey, I need some more Wellbutrin. And I guess maybe they didn't get it, or maybe what I ended up finding out is I had, um, you can you get these refills. And so I guess I was still able to get refills without them having put in a new prescription because they called me this morning. Uh, and they're like, hey, baby, I just want to let you know we got, um, you got refills on there, so you don't really need, you don't need it. You just go to, you call the CVS. Okay. Thanks. You know, just a fun convo. Just a, I love my psychiatrists. Very kind people. Very good, good people. 
known them for a long, long, long time. Uh, so yeah, I called CVS, which is the worst thing you ever, uh, horrible, I mean, torture. Really calling any major corporation is horrible because nobody's on, you know, it's, there's not a human there. You have, or you, or you have to like jump all these, you have to, you know, recite every number in the, in human existence. If you're a human, press one. If you're a goldfish, press two. If you're a caterpillar, hang up. We don't let cal- caterpillars on here. If you're, then you have to go through all of it. And if you try to press it early, they don't let you press it early. You have to listen to the whole menu. So if you need the uh, if you need the band aid department, press seven. If you need. I don't need the Band-Aid department. Who needs the Band-Aid department? Go, just go buy Band-Aids. So you get through this uh, insanely long call where you're made to listen to music a bunch of times. And it's not good music. So you're just kind of walking around your house with your phone on speaker, uh, listening to a, what's the word, an instrumental version of... Uh, Say my name. You know, while you're kind of with, while you're withdrawing from antidepressants. It's kind of not doing well. And you finally get, uh, you finally get to a human. You know, hey, you know, and then they ask you, the, you know, when's your birthday? What's your name? Uh, and then they're like, oh yeah, you got some prescriptions in, um, but, an, and this happened today. She's like, but unfortunately we, uh, we have to transfer your prescription to another CV, another service, uh, because we, we only do 90 days, uh, and we don't have enough. So you're going to have to go to another CVS and get a 30 day supply. And I said, really? And then she, uh, took about two seconds and went well actually no no you're good come in well where did that information come okay be there soon and they have a pretty long lunch break and you know and then you get to CVS and you're sitting in you know that line um and you know everybody's kind of upset because we're we're sitting in a drive-thru where you're not getting food uh but maybe it's you know some people might consider pills food. I don't know. Got to, you know, I wonder if that'll be a thing in the future. Is, you know, we don't have food anymore. Everybody just kind of has pills. Wouldn't that be kind of fun? You know, you could take a pill and you'd be like, oh, I just drank a glass of orange juice. How'd it taste? Like nothing. Nothing tastes like anything. Oh, that's going to sad. Um, but yeah, no, I did get, I got the Wellbutrin. So that's good. That's good. We're doing good. Everything's fine. And I would be okay. I mean, if I didn't get it, we'd figure it out. But today is uh, Thursday. Thursday. Every, today's Thursday. Um, and... Uh, my my psychiatrist's office is closed from Thursday at 5 p.m. until Monday at 9 a.m. Uh, so if you are unable to get your prescription filled before then, you get a fun three and a half day journey of uh, just a pretty bad time. You know, because when you need a medication, especially like an antidepressant or an antipsychotic, an anxiety medication. Uh, and then you you don't have it. Your it's not just those three and a half days that are going to be bad because then you're, it's going to be out of your system, uh, and then it's going to be probably like five days of just feeling horrible when you need that. And every you know everybody has different uh, everybody has different opinions on medication, right? You know whether you should take it or just go work out. Go do a push-up in the shower. 
Run! Running is my drug! Okay. Hey, who needs, who needs medication when you got meditation? Me! I do. Yeah, it depends what you uh, are willing to, to take on, what you're willing to deal with. I um, would rather take medication than be sad all the time. Because I also have, uh, you know, I have been extremely into working out. And even when I'm, when I'm doing that, I, you know, it's an issue I have. Of like, you know, the, the anxiety and the worry and all that. Uh, a lot of it helps. I, um, it helps also with like obsessive compulsive stuff. That's been an issue uh, I've had since I was a kid is OCD and those, you know, um, those tendencies. Um, I, right now, my, so one of my roommates got a uh, membership to Costco and I have a, I have an irrational phobia of membership based retail warehouses. Sam's Club, Costco, Walmart's with high ceilings. It's pretty bad. I know that's insane. I know. I've uh, 23, had it since I was probably like four or five. Uh, just, and I've gone to a lot of therapy. Everybody, that's always something. When you have an irrational phobia, I'm very, you know, a lot of times you're very aware that it's irrational, but then you get in the scenario or you get near the object and it's like a physical response. Like, uh, you know, you're sweating or you're shaking or you're, you know, you get really nauseous and hot and it's hard to breathe or, you know, that's always been my experience. Because I've had, especially as a kid, I had a lot of irrational phobias. Um, I was uh, afraid of plastic silverware until I was like 15. I wouldn't use like plastic spoons or forks unless forced, which nobody really forced. I just became the kid that would just like have like a metal spoon and a towel, you know, when I went to school. People are accommodating. It is it, People are judgmental, but they're accommodating. What? You can't use a fork? It's something I'm working on. I, that is something I can do. I can use plastic silverware. Uh, I prefer not to. I don't like to do it. I don't know exactly what it is. A texture thing, the idea of eating with plastic, maybe. If it's like a really hard plastic, that doesn't bother me. Somebody's car alarm is going off. What's going on? What is happening? And it's off, it's off. Yeah, no, I could, you really hard plastic or, well, I also had a really bad fear of wheelchairs for a long time. Uh, but it was mostly like just a, if I would see a wheelchair or a picture of a wheelchair or uh, be around one at all, I just wouldn't be able to eat until I like wash my arms and my hands and stuff. And it would, uh, you know, but which is, still somewhat like it's still somewhat true I mean I don't I can push through it because I worked in, I worked in special ed and I worked in rest but um which is like when you care for people that have special needs it's like babysitting but not necessarily for kids and it's for people with special needs and a lot of those people that I worked with were in wheelchairs and so I think if it's a very necessary thing like if I'm taking care of somebody and I haven't eaten in a long time yeah I'll eat and I'll be fine. Um, and it went not even if I hadn't eaten in a long time. I would just, I was fine. But if it's, I don't know. There's something about wheelchairs that have always just, I think have been very scary to me. Like the idea of not being able to walk or the idea of losing, losing independence is very scary. So maybe that's part of it. I know that played into like, the Sam's Club is the worst one. I know that's crazy. It, Sam's, it goes Sam's Club, Costco, Walmart with high ceilings. Those are uh, because they have a lot of those electric wheelchairs, and there would always be like these really um, overweight 
uh, overweight, a lot of overweight people in electric wheelchairs. I'm sorry I said overweight like that. I thought it would be funny. It was just strange. Uh, in wheelchairs, and I have nothing, um, there's nothing, I have nothing against people that are overweight at all. I think there's a lot of things that play into it, and you're not always in control of it. And when you are in control of it, it's very hard to get out of. I mean, so you're, you know, you're living your life and you're doing what you can. But I, uh, for whatever reason, as a child, I was very scared of, uh, like becoming morbidly obese. I think just like any other, you know, disability, it's like, oh, that's scary to me because I think I knew that when you're overweight, you, uh, you know, you get sick easier, you die, you know, it's just, un it's a health issue. And so that was scary to me. And so that was kind of connected. That and the the fact that there's restu there's a restaurant in, you know, in Costco and Sam's Club, they have those little restaurants. I never liked that. I don't. I don't like when there's a uh, a restaurant inside of a store. You know, because it, you really don't need that. I mean, it's, I feel like it should be two separate things. You know, you don't want to be like eating a soft pretzel while somebody's uh, try. You know, purchasing a vacuum. I don't know why that bothers me. I don't know why. I just, I don't know. It was the same thing. Like, I remember being a kid and, like, eating in a Target at that little store. Which I don't even know if it, there's a name for it. It's just the Target restaurant where they have, like, slushies. And I was just, like, eating a soft pretzel at a Target. And then somebody came through in a wheelchair, which is not even indicative of any... Somebody in a wheelchair could go into any restaurant. So it has nothing to... I don't think it has anything to do with that. And, of course, they should be allowed... I think my mind just connects things uh, in weird way, you know. Like I'll, I'll see something, and for whatever reason, it'll become negative. And then when it's negative, it's so hard to to get it out of that. And it's never connected to people. Like I'm not mad at anyone. Uh, there's nothing wrong with obese people. There's nothing wrong with people in wheelchairs. There's nothing wrong uh, with membership-based retail warehouses. Except, you know, for me, it was always buying in bulk, too. The idea of it always scared me. Even though it's good and it's cheaper and it's reasonable and you should do it. Um, I just, it seemed so unnecessary in my mind to be like, oh, yeah, I just want to have 78 bottles of mustard just kind of sitting in the pantry. Like, it, both it bothered me. You know, like you, in the because there was the smell too in in Sam's Club and Costco that just I would go in. I remember being a kid and like putting my shirt like all the way over my face just so I could like see, and just like putting my hands over because it was just this intense smell that like made me almost sick. Of just of that when I was in like Sam's Club. And I would just be, you know, like begging my parents to let me stay in the car because I hated it so much. And they did, you know, they wanted me to get over it just because as a person, you know, as an adult, you need to get over that uh, in order to be, reason, you know, be a reasonable adult. Which I think is is ideal, yes. But I also think you can live with an irrational phobia. Um it just makes things inconvenient. Like I said, my roommate goes to Costco. And so there's aspects of that of like, um, like I don't, you know, putting stuff in the fridge or whatever. And then I, I see that there's a Kirkland brand. And then I like just, and if my item touched that, like then there's this thing in my mind going, oh, you can't have that anymore, you know, which is not correct. And I'm like walking myself through that. Dad, I'm crazy. I know. I'm aware. I'm aware. You know, and there's... But then if, when you tell somebody something like that, they're not understanding of it usually because it's not a normal thing. Like I told one of my roommate, I said, hey, uh, well, because she had a coat on that was from 
it was either I think it was Costco. She had a coat on from Costco, and I went, you know, I was about to hug her, and then I realized the coat was from Costco, and I said, "Oh, I can't. I'm sorry. You're wearing a, a jacket from Costco." And she, and this wasn't to be mean at all. This is a reasonable thing to say. But she's like, "Oh, right, you're gonna have to get over that." I know. <laughs> I've been trying. I've gone to so much therapy. So much therapy for like, uh, what's the word? Exposure therapy and things like that where you're working on uh, doing these things that make you so uncomfortable. But it hasn't gone away. You know, and maybe that's every, that's always the scary that people will say like, oh, you're, you're letting yourself continue to believe that. You know, you're letting yourself continue to be scared by, by th you know, just tell yourself, oh, uh, I'm not scared of that. Yeah, I'm not scared. I'm not. I'm not scared. I'm not about to vomit and throw and faint. Because uh, sometimes it's physical. It becomes physical, these phobias, you know. Uh but I do. I would like to get over that. But it's very difficult. I don't know if you guys have irrational phobias. Maybe that'll be something fun to comment. Uh, but yeah, you know, that's not something that people understand. When you're like, hey, I'm afraid of this thing that other people uh, enjoy, you know? Like to, to have a fear that other people find uh, to be beneficial, you know? Like a fear that's not scary is confusing to people. And that's when you become kind of crazy in their eyes. But I think the sooner you accept that, you know, people think you're crazy, the sooner uh, you kind of learn to embrace it too. Like one time I was walking um, down the street and I was, whenever whenever I walk by myself, I like to listen to music and kind of, you know, said. I like to do like strange movements sometimes just, uh, you know, to practice for comedy and to also, I just enjoy it. It's fun. Like, to, you know, uh, like sometimes it'll be like miming, yeah, uh, like I'm folding and I'm putting it open in the washer and putting the basket in the closet. I think it's a fun exercise. But I was doing this, and there was, across the street, there was a mom with her kid, like a little kid, maybe like three or four. And she looked over at me, and then she, like, pulled her kid to the other side and, like, quickly walked away. Like, you know, just with this face of, like, what are you doing? Like this... um. The first time somebody, uh, the first time somebody thinks that you're crazy, you know, and you know that that's what they think, is kind of a pivotal moment, right? Because it's this, uh, oh, I, you're almost making a decision in that moment of like, oh, am I gonna? How do I feel about this? Am I okay with them thinking that, or do I need to, uh, you know, it. it you, I guess you kind of decide if you are crazy and if you're okay with it or if you're going to kind of stop doing the things you enjoy because of what other people think, which a lot of people do. Most people do. Uh, but I don't think it's worth it. You know, I'd rather live... Um, I'd rather live in a box that's, you know, I pretend is a school bus than in a box that is, you know, just a box, I suppose. I'd rather kind of use my imagination than uh, live in reality sometimes. You know, because reality is such a, reality is a tough place to set up camp. Uh, there's so much negativity and so many scary things that sometimes it's fun to just kind of, you know, be walking down the street and, you know, miming that you're going into a room or that you're uh, climbing a ladder. Why can't I be climbing a ladder? Oh my God, I'm sweating. 
I bought clinical deodorant. It is not working. You know, miming that you're climbing a ladder. Because why can't I be climbing a ladder in the middle of uh, a target? How do you know there's not an invisible ladder right there? How do you know that? Hmm. Oh, yeah, I, um, I've been having this problem with a, a local homeless man, very nice man, a uh, very kind person. I once told him, you know, I, I gave him some money and I told him, hey, I think you're a great person. If you ever need anything, let me know, um, which was a mistake because he's homeless. He always needs something uh, every day, and I don't have the money to do that. So it was crazy I told him that, you know, to be like, oh, yeah, just, like, let hit me up. And I, I, guess I, was, I guess I was thinking it'd be like, oh, like, once a month. He'd be like, hey, can I, I'm really hungry. Can I have, like, $5? I don't know why I thought that would be. I just wanted to help. I wanted to help. I thought he was, a, you know, he's a good, I, I do, I still think he's a good person. But he's been bringing it up. Hey, you remember what we talked about? Maybe that conversation. You're, you're abusing this. You know? Yeah, I feel bad. That's, um, you know, homeless people are, the, yeah, that's something I'm very, I don't carry around cash intentionally because I would give it away uh, to the point of not having money myself to do things that I need. Because, and it's not because I'm a good, a, a good person, I don't think. I think it's, it's just because you see all of this need in people and you see that they're suffering so much. You're like, oh, I have this, let me give it to you to help you suffer less. And I just can't, I can't carry around because I would do it too much and I would run out of money. And you just feel bad because you see that so much. But sometimes I, you know, if I do have something, sometimes, like the other day I went to the store, I was, I was at work and I went to the store, the gas, it's, a, it's called a bodega, which is kind of a crazy word, bodega, bo, sounds like a, maybe like a, like a Venezuelan boxer. Give it up for Bodega. Bod. And in the right corner, coming out of Venezuela, is Bodega. Is that racist? Bodega. I mean, you've got to cover your face when you're boxing. You've got to. It took a few months of boxing classes, it was not great. I would. I was very bad at remembering to cover my face. That was something they always said. You've got to protect yourself. I feel good. I'll go. I'll keep it down here. You don't know how to box. I'll keep it down here. Yeah. Yeah. Not great at it. It wasn't good. It was a fun activity, but I was. It was not good. Um. Yeah. I went to the bodega, and there was this uh, man outside that was very clearly very, you know, schizophrenic. And he was seemed nonverbal in the sense that what he was saying didn't make any sense. He could say words, but they didn't make any sense. Like he was kind of just shouting out nouns. Apple, pine tree, sea, starfish. And then I went up to him and I, I had some cash and I gave it to him. Uh, well, I, uh, I held it out. I was like, hey, do you, do you want, do you want some, do you want this? That sounds so bad. Do you want some? Would you, would you like money? Would that help you? And he took it. He just nodded. He took it. And he said, star. I swear to God, this happened. And it was this interesting moment of like, I knew, I, I knew exactly what he meant. Star. Indeed. Star indeed. And um, yeah. We are, let's go into a new topic, right? Opening 
put a little key in a lock. Oh, it's a it's a tiny door. It's one of those, you know, those little fairy doors that parents put on the wall so their kids think there's a fairy coming. I love uh I love videos when, you know, uh where parents are like, "Oh, this is something cool I'm doing for my kid" or like or like uh this is what I got my kid for Christmas. That's a very popular uh kids. That's a very popular kind of YouTube trend. You know, people showing what they got their kids for Christmas or Easter. It's kind of fun. It's fun to see a parent be so excited. Like, oh, my God. Like, oh, oh, I, my kid's going to love this. And they just get so into it. And I just, I don't know. I love videos like that because I think I really do want to have children. And I just love, I love kids. You know, kids are so kind and the way they view the world is so special, I think. Because you're so excited about everything. Uh, you know, but I love a lot of... I love a lot of strange YouTube uh, kind of types types of YouTube videos. Um, one of my favorites is Bunny the Talking Dog. I don't know if I've talked about Bunny before on here, but... Uh, so so there's this YouTube channel. I think it's called What's, What's Going On With Bunny. And it's this dog that uh, communicates via button and uh, it's kind of insane what she's been able to accomplish I mean in terms of communication it's better than a lot of people I think even like so the owner what what the owner did she set out all these buttons which is not she's not the first person to do this a lot of people have done this with their dogs but usually it's like three buttons right it's like uh, outside water, food, stuff like that. Uh, but the owner of Bunny, I mean, I think it appears to be like 150 to 200 buttons. Maybe that's, maybe that's an over-exaggeration, but it's a lot of buttons. And what she's done is she's able, Bunny's able to communicate with like sentences. And the owner will ask questions like, hey, Bunny, you know, where, what do you want to do? And Bunny will be like, Bunny want go. And then grandma house or something you know to that extent and then it's kind of been crazy because bunny's gotten pretty existential bunny's gotten pretty existential uh like she's starting to have dreams and talk about the dreams which is crazy a crazy concept uh they they put a mirror in front of bunny and then she has she was i believe it was like uh who, uh, bunny human? Yes. And the owner was like, no, no, bunny dog. And then bunny was like, no, bunny human. It was a very kind of scary thing. If I'm correct in what I, but I'm pretty sure it was something to that extent of bunny thinking she was a human. And then another time uh, bunny asked, when bunny end? And everybody kind of in the comments and the owner was like, well, I guess this is Bunny asking about death. Well, that's good. Get it? People are scared of AI. Let's be scared of dogs with buttons. I mean, that's, they're so, in it's so intelligent. They're so intelligent. I think a lot of animals are way more intelligent than we think. Significantly more. I think that'll be kind of an interesting thing to watch in science is, uh, how animals, you know, we give animals access to communication and they're really able to use it. Because as humans, I think we just think we're so much smarter than everything else, but uh, we're just not giving the resources. That's something I noticed while working in special ed too, is if you give, uh, if you give people the correct resources, like the things they need to communicate, they will communicate. But if you don't, they can't. And so you just think they're, you know, you think they're dumb or they're not able to, but then you give them, um, you know, pictures or an iPad or, you know, maybe they communicate with their eyes with like blinking and, or what's, oh, I can't remember what it's called, but like eye movement, you choose, you choose letters and then you're like, oh my gosh, they're so intelligent. And then, yeah, I think if we give animals That'll be an interesting thing to watch for sure. 
when I when I was a kid, I had a. Uh, this is a different topic for sure, but I think it, this might be fun to cover because I've been thinking about it a lot. Uh, when I was a kid, I had pretty bad gender dysphoria. Still do. If you couldn't tell, it didn't go away. But uh, I had pretty bad gender dysphoria. And I, you know, was, I guess, trying to figure out ways to kind of uh, cope with it. And so I, I used to be really into this computer game called Club Penguin. Is anybody, are you guys... So it, it's Club Penguin is like a kid's computer game where everybody's a penguin and you live in a little penguin world and you just kind of interact with each other. And like you can type words. And, stuff. and I remember going up to the other penguins and I would type, I'm a boy. Just over and over again. Like going, a, I'm a boy. What? We're in a pizza shop. I'm a boy. What do you, who are you? A boy. It was just too, it was too much. And I would dress up my penguin in like a suit uh, and then give him like a, you know, a, a helmet, like a football helmet and a briefcase. And then just go, you know, I'm a boy. Just kind of standing in the middle of all the other penguins just kind of having conversations with text bubbles and then there'd be one uh, kind of overly masculine penguin in the middle going, boy! It's just really aggressive. It was really... Uh, yeah, I was just thinking about that recently because what a strange... I mean, the weirder part about it too is I remember I would go back to my igloo. It was blue, by the way. Oh, am I not a boy now? My blue igloo. And I would kind of, you know, hang out there. Uh, I, w I would have my penguin put on, like, women's clothing, like a dress or, you know, a hair ba headband, which was odd. I don't remember. I do remember doing that, but I don't remember why I was doing that. And I, w thinking about it now, I think it's, I was almost like the first transgender animated penguin. You know, I was like the Caitlyn Jenner of penguins. Which is so crazy, you know. It's it's odd to do that as a child. Because I feel like I kind of foreshadowed um, life in a way. You know, it's obviously not that dramatic. And I, 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 I dress in a masculine way and I don't have to like I don't I don't tell people I'm a boy anymore. Maybe I do kind of with my actions. I don't know. I think it'd be fun. I think I'd be we'll revisit. I don't know. But yeah, I remember doing that. I would go up to the penguins and and sometimes they would question it. They'd be like, "You're not a boy." What? Wait, why if you were a boy, why would you keep telling us that? Oh, oh, I'm not a boy. Then why do I have a tie? Hey, how would you ask yourself that? Oh, I'm not a boy. Why am I carrying a briefcase? <laughs> hey, how about we think? How about we use our head to think? Got kind of aggressive, kind of a uh, mean, probably. Well, I'm so glad you could stop by. It was a fun time. Hope it didn't get too sad. We get a little serious this week. Got it. We go in flows, right? You know, we uh serious, funny, serious. Thank you. I'm so glad you made it out. This was good, I think. Let me know. Uh, and I'd love to have you back next week. Back at the hole in the pen cat. Thank you so much. I'm Ryer Cameraman. <laughs>